I asked, why is doing what God commanded you to do considered saving yourself by all you street preachers out there? Why? Why can't you tell people that they can do what God has commanded them to do? Because of what you believe about this theology. By constantly limiting man's ability, they're saying that if a person actually does what God has commanded them to do, to stop sinning and obey Him, seek Him through a, a, a self-cleansing humility of repentance, no matter how long it takes, then he's overdoing it. He's doing too much, and he's trying to establish his own righteousness and save himself so he can pound his chest. See, it's, it's as though in their thinking, God doesn't allow man any credit for genuinely obeying him and departing from his evil ways, and he's always cautioning him not to do too much, lest you rob me of my sovereignty to save you in your sins. See, the Scripture doesn't address inability in any way whatsoever. I don't see it anywhere in the Scriptures. But simply presses the imperative of obedience under the premise that people under this message are fully capable of rendering such obedience in doing what's right, what God has called them to do. And like I say, God is warning them, He's calling them, He's stretching forth His arm night and day to the rebellious and stiff-necked people. He's... he's He's not willing that any should perish, all should come to repentance. He's convicting the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment through His Spirit. If all that's not enough, folks, if all that that he's, God is already doing, always doing through His messengers, if that's not enough to bring a person through a genuine, self-cleansing repentance unto life, then what is? Does it have to be some kind of magic? How does God then do that? Well, you say the bondage can't be broken. It can be broken in that process of repentance. Is God there? God is there. But until that bondage is broken, that soul has been cleansed, like it says, James 1.21, cleanse yourself of all filthiness and overflow of wickedness. Cease to do evil, learn to do good. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Wash yourselves, you double-minded. All those things calling you to do what you're able to do. Not easy, because you've sold yourself into sin. Yes. But if that's not the case, then God's going to have to apologize to Zacchaeus. Because under that premise that you people out there are pushing, when Zacchaeus heard that Christ was coming, and he repented, and he restored fourfold, all that he had taken by fraud, went and presented himself before Christ and even said, look what I've done, and then heard the words, salvation, today salvation has come to your house. Well, God's going to have to apologize to him if this stuff's true. Because he did too much. He overdid it. He's trying to save himself. God, Jesus should have said, well, take it easy, Zacchaeus, now. You're, you're, you know, you're, you're, I have to caution you that you're not trusting in my finished work. You're going around boasting that you did all this, and, and I, I just can't allow that because that would rob me of my glory. See, no repentant sinner is going to rob God of his glory because he knows what it took to get through that process. People that just received Jesus under this mess, they have no idea what coming out of sin means. They think they're going to, re they're going to get the Holy Spirit, and then they're going to sin, repent, sin, repent for the rest of their life. And as long as they're on the repent side, when they die, they'll be okay. That's so ridiculous, I, I really don't know what to say about it. I really don't know what to say about it. I know you can twist the scriptures to make it seem that way, but I don't see it in any of the teachings of Christ. So he's going to have to apologize to Zacchaeus and to the prodigal, which we mentioned, that came up out of the pig pen on his own. I didn't see the father going into the pig pen and saying, well, I know you have the inability and you're unwilling to come out of this, and I'm going to help you and then pull you back into the kingdom. No, he did it on his own. And then he went and presented himself to the Father. I have sinned against you, against heaven. You know, he didn't come with any pride. He threw himself at the mercy of God. And that's what any sinner coming through repentance is going to do. And then especially Nineveh. God's really going to have to go back and change history in Jonah chapter 3 because Nineveh, the whole city from the king on down, declared a fast and a repentance and came clean with God and then cried out and said, perhaps maybe God will grant us a reprieve. No pride there. Only brokenness. 
but realized that they had to do what was right before God would hear and listen because this is what He has ordained, that you come clean with God because your work is together with God, that you receive not the grace of God in vain. What's in vain mean? Without purpose. Without purpose to no effect. See, it has no effect when you inject any kind of corrupt nature or moral depravity or limiting. You know, I know you feel sorry for these sinners, and I know you, maybe you, even you have come out of a lot of mess in your own life. And you see, well, God helped you every step of the way. Yes, He did. I'm not denying that He did with each and every one of us. But through that process, understand that it was the ability within man to come clean with God to begin with. Approach that mercy seat in the manner in which He has prescribed in Scripture. And then find that mercy to be washed and regenerated in Christ. That's what it is. The newness and the washing and the regeneration that comes when the Holy Spirit finally does come in. But don't tell me a person is going to get the Holy Spirit because his corrupt nature and this unwillingness that he sold himself into over all these years of progression into depravity and then somehow by minute steps over a long period of time he's going to keep falling back into drunkenness and pornography and all this. No, that's what the church is teaching. Why even come out of the church if you're going to preach the same thing they do? Preach the message the way it's presented in Scripture. God doesn't limit man's ability. There's nothing in Scripture that limits his ability. It simply says, do what I told you to do. Choose this day who you will serve. I have set before you life and death, blessings and cursings. Choose life. Why can't you preach the gospel that way? The, the free grace, the not of works, it's past sins forgiven. Past sins washed away. Previously committed sin. That's what grace is about. Grace teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust to live soberly, righteous, godly in this present age. You know those scriptures, Titus 2.14. So bring that message to the people. And understand that the sum of all truth is to love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. All you have within you to do so. You gave yourself everything you had within you to become a slave to sin. Give yourself everything that's in you to become a servant of God. And He's stretching forth His hand all day long to pull you out of that mess. Do that. Do what's right. Live clean and pure in Christ. That's the sum of all truth in the Scriptures. The opposite of all truth is you can sin and not die. That's what all this theology is based on. All the books that were ever written, all the pile of nonsense from Augustine right up through the Reformation, right now the pundits that are preaching in the pulpits all across this country, that's what they're preaching, that you can sin and not die. Giving people a license for their immorality and then denying it out of the other side of their mouth. That's what they've been doing for so long. I've been trying to persuade people with all boiling down to you can't do it, and if you do do it, you're saving yourself, and he did it for you anyway. Trust in that, and you're saved. I don't know how much more clear, how much more imperative, emphatic I can make this to clear it up in your mind that we're not being self-righteous by doing what God has commanded us to do and given us the ability to do so, to live to the glory of him. And give him all the glory. I see Paul clean, pure, holy all through the scriptures. We talked about that in our chief of sinners lesson. I didn't see him boasting before God. I didn't see Zacchaeus boasting, the prodigal boasting, anybody in Nineveh boasting, all many other places in the scriptures. But that's what you always accuse us of doing. So I leave you with why? doing what God told us to do to begin with. Just simply told us. He didn't say anything about inability. Why is that saving ourself and being self-righteous? I just don't understand how much more clear it could be in the Scriptures than what it is already. To do what God told you to do and come clean with Him. No matter how much effort and striving it takes. He said strive to enter through the narrow gate. That means to put forth every effort to the point of agony to enter into that kingdom. And that's what it's going to take. 
many of you people to come out from under your perversion and what you've given yourself to. But those of you preaching the gospel in some distorted manner are just adding more complication to the mess and giving them more excuses why they don't have to come clean with God and they can just have a sin-repent relationship. What kind of relationship is that? The relationship is to be a royal priesthood, to walk in purity and righteousness and holiness all the days of their lives. To sing the praises of Him, to be lights holding forth the word of truth, to be the salt of the earth, the light, of, the light shining in a dark place. That's the life of a person that's born into His kingdom, that's washed, regenerated, and sanctified in His kingdom. That's the life that we should present before these people that is achieved coming through that repentance unto life. Stop limiting man's ability with all this corrupted doctrine and fallacies and just tell them simply, love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And in that, you fulfill all the law and the prophets. And you can walk that narrow way and endure to the end and enter that kingdom.